broadcasting? Yep. Great. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ramsey Hart, and I'm the executive director at the Table Community Food Centre in Perth, Ontario. And the Table is a community food centre, one of 13 across Canada, and we have a variety of programs, all of which are focused on bringing people together around good food. Uh, unfortunately, bringing people together right now isn't it's so easy because of the pandemic and so what we've decided to do is take some of our programming online. We do still have uh, programs running though. Our food bank is open four days a week. We're doing community meals uh, three times a week. Our garden is active and our community advocates are available uh, to consult with folks and help them navigate some of the new economic benefits or get access to, to programs and services that can really support them. So please check us out online at thetablecfc.org um, and follow our Facebook page uh, to stay up to date. So today uh, we're going to do a table at home session that's focused on uh, front yard gardening and using a technique called lasagna gardening. Uh, that's how I designed the garden you see behind me and uh, it's in my front yard here at Perth. Uh, maybe you can pan over and just get a sense of, of the area where I decided to put my garden. Now the first question you might want to ask is why put a garden in your front yard? Don't we usually put lawn in the front, maybe some flowers, and then save the veggies for the backyard? Well, for me, it was mostly a practical issue. My backyard, even though there's lots of space back there, had a big apple tree and a number of other trees that meant it was quite shady. So it was here in the front yard where I got the best sun exposure. Um, also, uh, I kind of like the social aspect of having a front yard garden. While I'm working in my garden, Neighbors walk by, I can feed them some strawberries or harvest some lettuce for them or pass on some cilantro uh, and to have a little chat. And of course, if we're doing that, we do it at a safe distance now. Um, but uh, it's always fun. I've had kids, uh, you know, lift them over the fence and they can uh, get in there and pick some strawberries. Uh, it's just a nice social thing. Um, and I also kind of like the fact that it makes a statement about using our uh, green spaces to grow food as opposed to just have a, a kind of uh, mono crop or, or relatively, in my view, boring front yard. Uh, so those are the reasons why I decided to <clears throat> have a front yard garden. Pragmatics, um, I like the aesthetics of it, the social aspect, and to make a bit of a statement. Now if you're gonna uh, plan a front yard garden, yeah, walk with me maybe, let's see if we can do this, uh, a couple of things you want to keep in mind. You might want to check in with your municipality and see if there are any bylaws preventing you from doing a front yard garden. Uh, some people prefer not to and they just go ahead and do it and regardless of, of what the implications might be. I decided I would check in with Perth and see how uh, the town planner felt about me having a front yard veggie garden. And they said there were no issues at all as long as I maintained good sight lines coming out of my driveway. So if you'll see at the front of the garden here, I've left a nice buffer. Uh, on my neighbor's side there's a, a big cedar hedge so I, I'm not really... Uh, impeding visibility at all and there's a good uh, six feet or more uh, from the curb so that anybody backing in or out of my driveway isn't impeded. Also I don't plant anything tall so if you're sitting in a car you can see right across uh, the garden it's not an issue at all. That's one really important consideration in front yard gardening is making sure you're keeping safe and not having uh, any, any blocked sight lines. Another issue here in, in uh, anywhere that there's snow is what happens when the snow is cleared in the winter time. So in Perth, they plow it and right about here you get a, a really high snow bank uh, and then they come along with big machinery and they scrape it all up uh, throughout the winter. And so a couple of issues with that. One, there could be salt uh, in the snow uh, that's piled up so that can make it hard for your veggies to grow. And two, if you put in any infrastructure in terms of fencing, when they come along to clear the snow in the winter time, it would all be destroyed. So that's the other reason I have a nice buffer here uh, at, at the front end of my, uh, my veggie garden. Other than that, it, it's pretty much, oh, one other thing uh, you want to consider is utilities. Um, not so much an issue if it's underneath the actively uh, gardened area, but if you're going to put in a, a tree or a shrub that's more permanent, or if you uh, wanted to have some hardscaping and fencing, you want to think about the fact that at some point you may need to get into your water line or there may be a gas line or, or other utilities. So I did do a utility locate when I put this garden in um, and I made sure that uh, the only utility under the garden is a, a water line but we can get easy access. It's uh, somewhere just past the garlic there I think. Um, 
And <clears throat> if we needed to get into there, it wouldn't be that big a deal. Um, but you know, I don't want to go and plant a, a big tree right over top of that or, or, or something like that. So those are some of the considerations in uh, having a front yard garden. Please feel free if you have any questions uh, during the live broadcast, feel free to ask. I'm going to try and fire up this tablet so that I can see your questions. And we'll just get on to the, sorry, I was having all sorts of technical challenges before getting the sound right. I hope you can hear me okay. So how did I make this garden? There's a variety of ways to start a garden from a lawn. <clears throat> you might hire a, uh, or borrow or buy a rototiller and go at it. You might practice uh, a technique called double, double digging where you uh, take a spade and you turn the soil and you, you mix it and then you sort of move through a trench. Uh, and that's an awful lot of physical labor. Um, the rototiller as well can be pretty labor intensive. Uh, you're also burning fossil fuels while you're doing it. Um, and, and it's just a lot of work. So the technique I used is a much lower uh, labor technique. Uh, it's called lasagna gardening. So all I did to make my garden was I had some friends over. There's a group in Perth called the Sod Squad that likes to help people get their garden started. So I, I guess there was about four or five of us and this was in 2015, my first summer here. Um, and we staked out where the garden was gonna go. It was a little bit smaller than it currently is. I've added one bed since then. Uh, and we gathered, I had already gathered up all kinds of cardboard. So come over here and I'll show you the basic technique. All we really need to do is have some big pieces of cardboard or if you've got small pieces, just make sure you layer them so that any gaps are overlapping. Uh, if you've got a piece with lots of flaps like this, you might want to layer another piece on. The <coughs> cardboard goes down. Oh, I'm out of poop. <laughs> the cardboard goes down onto the grass. You don't have to do any prep to the grass whatsoever. Uh, you don't want it too long, so maybe give it a cut if it's on the long side. Lay your cardboard down. Oh, my hose is on, but we'll just pretend that my hose is on. We're going to soak that cardboard down really well. That helps it stick down and be more even and have better contact with the grass. The next thing you do, you're going to have to have a source of good garden soil. Now, depending on the scale you're operating, you can buy it at a, a, a nursery in the bag, or you might want to call a landscape a depot type place and have them bring it by the yard. <clears throat> so you're going to have to do some calculations. Be very careful with those calculations. Uh, I once ordered three times as much soil as I needed because I, I divided something by nine instead of 27 when I was converting between meters and feet. So uh, I had a massive amount of soil in my driveway for a year after that as I was trying to give it away and then it froze solid. So all that to say, make sure you, you double check your calculations when you order it um, in a dump truck and, and off to the races. That's really the only downside of, of lasagna gardening is you're going to need access to that garden soil because you're going to use the cardboard to uh, kill off the grass underneath and then you're going to layer soil on top. So rather than using the soil that's in place, you're bringing in new soil. So all you need to do once the cardboard is wet, you're just going to layer in the garden soil. This is just sort of a, a mock demo here. We're not going to do anything full scale. I'm, I'm not actually going to plant veggies right here. And to what depth do you need that soil? You probably want a minimum of, of four inches, but six inches is even better. If you're going to make a curved bed, then uh, you, know, you want your maximum depth to be a good six inches. The way I like to garden is in raised beds. And so what I do is I'll have one bed of the garden soil in between the beds, I'll layer in some mulch. So I like to use the old uh, bar from my fire. You can also use straw, wood chips, uh, dry leaves, uh, any number of organic material, and that's where your pathway is going to be. And that's it, really. That's all there is to it. A oh, one last step. 
What you want to do around the perimeter, because your garden is going to be right up against the, the long grass, the long grass is going to try and creep back in there. So it's a good idea to create a really distinct edge around your garden. And you can do that just by going straight down and then from the outside on an angle of about 45, just to take out a little divot of the sod. You're going to compost that and that will creep the grass from, from edging back in. That's uh, one of the maintenance things you're going to need to keep at as your garden is surrounded by soil. That's the case in, in any kind of garden that's uh, surrounded by grass. I've chosen to surround my garden with a, uh, a perennial border and to mulch with wood chips the perennial border. So when I'm edging it, I edge out here and that gives me a bit of a buffer and it means the grass doesn't get all caught up in the fence where it's harder to pull out. Speaking of fencing, um, front yard gardening, you're probably going to need a fence because of uh, neighbor's cats or your own cats or uh, in Perth there's a lot of rabbits so the rabbits are one of the bigger pests. If you have uh, groundhogs at all in your area, your fencing should go down into the ground. Um, I haven't really noticed any groundhogs right in this area so uh, this chicken wire fence just goes down to the soil level and it's done a great job of keeping out the rabbits, keeps out uh, much of the cat activity, I wouldn't say 100%, um, but uh, it definitely keeps out the rabbits, which are, the, are the, probably the bigger pests. Um, once I have my garden established through a lasagna method, which is really my preferred method, and I'll just review it for you very quickly. Cut your grass, lay down cardboard, make sure your edges are overlapping, wet the cardboard, Pile your, your uh, garden soil on top in whatever configuration you want. It can be rows, it can be spirals, it can be uh, concentric circles, whatever you, you choose. You can get quite fanciful if you like. Mulch between your uh, beds where you're going to grow, and then you're off to the races as once you've edged around uh, the perimeter. In your first year of a lasagna garden, you're not going to have a ton of soil depth. Uh, you're just going to be operating in that four to six inches of garden soil that you've put on. So you're probably not going to be able to grow a lot of root vegetables. If you think about trying to grow a carrot, um, in the lifetime of that carrot in that first gardening season, the cardboard is still going to be in place and that sod mat is still going to be in place. So uh, the carrots and, and other root vegetables are not going to be able to get down into the soil below. So you're going to be a little bit restricted into things that have a shallower root depth uh, lettuces, peas, uh, and the like. But still lots of things you can grow in that first season. After that first season, the cardboard will be almost gone and you'll, the worms will be coming in and the, the soil underneath will get aerated by the worms and you'll have a really beautiful uh, soil. The sod mat will start composting. It'll be nice and aerated and at that point you can uh, garden to your heart's content anything at all, root vegetables, uh, no limitations whatsoever. One other tip I forgot to mention in terms of your cardboard, <clears throat> it is a good idea to remove any tape off of the cardboard before you lay it down because that'll uh, stick around after. It's not the end of the world if you forgot, you forget, it'll come up as you're working your garden beds. So that's the basic lasagna gardening technique. I'm just going to check in on the Facebook page and see if there's any comments or questions. I don't know, Elizabeth, can you see if there's anything on your screen there? Uh, just good ideas, what um, Barbara has said. Okay, thanks, Barbara. So you are seeing questions and stuff pop up? Yep. Yeah, but there's no, okay, well then I don't need to use the tablet. Just I have a question for you. You have a question, right? <laughs> Besides the decrease in the amount of work that you need to do, um, what, uh, what other benefits are there to lasagna gardening? That's a great question. Almost like I'd asked her to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> less work really is the main advantage of lasagna gardening. But another really important uh, aspect of this, which we'll get into as we talk about how I manage my garden now, is that you're not disrupting the soil profile. So soils develop naturally in layers. So there's a layer at the top surface, which if you think of a forest floor or a prairie ecosystem, has all the organic matter on top and it's falling over and breaking down. And then that organic matter gets worked into the soil as you go down and down in depth. And then eventually you get down to the mineral soil 
uh, which is just the, the, the sand silt clay mix that you have uh, making up your soil. <clears throat> Through all those layers, there will be different organisms, different fungi, different bacteria, um, different insects and arthropods that live through that soil structure. They'll make holes and cavities and provide all kinds of ways for water to, to percolate through. It's a very complex uh, interconnected web of life in your soil. When you disrupt those layers, you turn everything on its head, uh, you bring organic matter to the surface where it's exposed to oxygen and burns up more fast, uh, more quickly than it would if it were deeper in the soil profile. Uh, all the animals and, and bacteria and fungi are displaced from their usual habitat and put into different layers of the soil. So uh, a lot of, especially permaculture and to some degree organic agriculture, really focus on trying to maintain the soil profile uh, and disturb it as little as possible. So in lasagna gardening, you're adding an organic rich garden soil on top uh, of that uh, existing soil profile and you're not disrupting and disturbing uh, everything that's happening underneath. You can, uh, it'll evolve and change slowly, uh, but you're not exposing all the carbon there to be uh, decomposed rapidly uh, to oxygen. So that's the other uh, real main advantage of, of lasagna gardening. Uh, another sort of side advantage too is you're, rather than burning fossil fuels to run a rototiller, you're making good use of uh, what's otherwise a, a bit of a waste product, which is uh, cardboard. If you don't have cardboard, you can also use newspaper, but you need quite a few layers uh, to almost want to get to the thickness of a piece of corrugated cardboard with your newspaper. And then again, wet it down and, and put your soil on top. Uh, so <clears throat> I mentioned the soil profile and not wanting to disturb it. And that's how I continue to garden now that my uh, veggie garden out here is established. So I have uh, five beds in this garden and they get a little bit misshapen with use and I have to sort of tidy them up and, and, and square them up a bit. But I've never put a rototiller in here and I've never taken a spade so that I am uh, protecting that soil structure. Um, I have mulch paths, a little bit more mulch in place is this spring still. But I have mulch paths where I move <coughs> throughout my garden and I try as much as possible never to stand on my bed so that they don't get compacted. They stay nice and fluffy and aerated. Um, and not disrupting the soil and not uh, tilling it or turning it over routinely, uh, along with making sure the soil profile stays intact, it also allows me to do things like have volunteers uh, pop up. So a volunteer is a plant that went to seed uh, earlier in the growing season or maybe even last growing season and comes up again in the garden. It's free food. It just appears in the garden. So that's what happened with this cilantro right here. Uh, it, I allowed some of the cilantro to go to seed and this spring it just came up. If I was constantly tilling the, the garden, then many of those, uh, those seedlings, those seeds would get mixed up. They might end up being too deep. I'd also be bringing uh, more seeds from the seed bank up to the surface. Another reason for maintaining the soil profile when you're starting the garden or on an ongoing basis is in an existing lawn, there's gonna be millions and millions and millions of seeds waiting to grow. And, and they'll be in layers in the soil. And so if you rototill and till everything up, um, all those seeds or some of those seeds will end up being in, in contact with uh, the surface and may end up germinating. The less you disturb the soil, the less you disturb the seed bank and bring new se weed seeds up to the surface. And so that uh, means a little bit less weed pressure. Certainly not weed free as you can see. Um, there's lots of creeping charlie that I'm constantly uh, trying to manage. Dandelions and things like that, but nothing too serious. One weed that can be an issue with lasagna gardening is cooch grass or other really uh, resistant uh, perennial weeds. Uh, but you would have the same issue if you rototill um, or if you use other techniques. Um, so I find that there is a little bit of cooch grass that may come up through, but if you keep your beds nice and aerated, uh, you can fork it and, and pull it out relatively easily. Eileen wants to know if you use compost. Yeah, so if you buy a good, rich um, garden soil, you won't need to add any amendments. So that's a triple mix soil is what I'm suggesting. Don't, don't use just generic topsoil. You want to make sure you're specifying something for growing veggies. 
so it'll be enriched already. So you'll probably have a good season or two where you don't need to add anything to your new garden. But after that, the nutrients are going to start to diminish. So it is important to replenish those nutrients um, and also to continue to improve the soil structure. So adding compost as well. Um, I make my own compost on site here. I bring in leaves. Uh, the mulch on the paths will help. And then I, I will also add composted manure um, about every other year um, to the beds. Um, I have a bit of a rotation where the garlic always gets manured um, and then um, it probably doesn't get manured the next year because I'll, it'll be in, uh, in production. Uh, but the other beds will get a, a good dose of, of compost or manure just about every year. Um, one of the other uh, things about not tilling your soil, as, long, as well as volunteers, if you don't till your soil, you have the opportunity of doing uh, overwintering things, either perennials, like, do I have any perennials nearby? Uh, here's my winter savory. So it's a perennial herb. And I find it's much easier with a no-till garden to protect the perennials because you don't have to be worried about bringing in a rototiller and managing it and not accidentally running over something when it's small or when you're not sure what it is. Um, and so I find the, the sort of lower uh, intensity managing the soil means you can have perennials more easily and you can also frost seed. So this is kale in my garden, which has already gone to flower. This heat has really uh, made it bolt quickly. But I got several good feeds of kale off of this really early in the spring because it had actually been seeded uh, last fall. Uh, just before we got snow, I put in some seeds and then it germinated early on and, and I had kale. Some people were wondering how I had stuff growing in my garden already when you know we were still getting that snow a few weeks ago. Um, and if you were, you know, go taking a rototiller and, and tilling up the whole bed, it would make it, you'd have to work around those areas uh, in order to make sure they came up the next year. We'll just let this uh, water bike go by. Does anybody have any other questions about uh, the no-till method for gardening or about lasagna gardening? Nothing coming up. What else can we show you? Here's a new experiment I've got coming uh, over here. One of the things I like to do with is, is play with uh, shade and using shade to good advantage in my garden. So um, I said I put this garden out here because it was the place where there was full sun. Um, but sometimes you don't necessarily want full sun. You want actually a little bit of shade to slow, for example, your lettuce from bolting. And so what I've done over here uh, is I planted cucumbers, which I'm gonna trellis up onto this cage. And in between there, I planted arugula between the two rows of cucumbers. So it's using up the space. The arugula will start to grow um, much more quickly than the cucumbers. So I will probably get a harvest of arugula before the cucumbers start to shade this. Uh, and then once the arugula is well established, the shade will help keep it uh, from bolting and going uh, really spicy and bitter on us. So just a, a fun little experiment to see how that goes and really trying to make sure I'm, I'm using the space to its maximum. Uh, I did the cucumbers first and then I looked at the space in the middle. I said, well, I should be able to do something in there. Uh, otherwise, the space just isn't getting used. What else did I want to show you? I think those are the basics. One other perennial plant I love uh, are my uh, walking onions or sometimes they're called multiplier onions. And that's the green onions back here. So they're wonderful in that they come up early in the spring. They're perennial, so you never need to plant them. Once you've got them in your garden, they'll be there forever, but they're not aggressive and invasive in a bad way. Uh, and they're called walking onions because they'll grow and then they'll get uh, They'll fall over and they'll establish a new cluster. And they'll also set, divide doing green onions throughout uh, the year. Oh, battery. <laughs> so those are the basics of uh, lasagna gardening, gardening in a front yard, and my method of, of no-till gardening that, that I like to use here uh, in, in my own garden. And we also use a very similar approach at the Tables Gardens in Laustool Park. Uh, the community garden in Laustool Park is operating. 
uh, please get in touch with our gardener Joanna if you're interested because we're not doing just the drop-in sessions like we normally would. We're scheduling people to keep the numbers low and to comply with the, the pandemic norms that we have to. Also a reminder that the food bank is open. Anybody that needs uh, some support in getting access to good healthy food is welcome to use the food bank. Uh, please don't be shy about accessing that service. And we have our community meals operating Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. And also um, the community advocates are, are more than happy to help folks access some of the economic benefits that have been made available and, as well as support with uh, housing searches uh, or accessing energy rebate programs and many, many more things. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them there and I'll answer them uh, once we go offline. Thanks again and stay safe.